Hey everyone, this is Travis with Working Class Garage. Today, I'm going to be talking about the must-have tools when getting into the automotive industry. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking about getting into the automotive industry, I'm going to go over some of the tools that I think are a necessity when starting out. Now I'm not going to go over every tool you need to work on cars. I'm just going to be talking about the things that you should probably have on your first day of work when you show up. Now you can expand from this and get more, but these are just the main things that I think you really need to have on your first day, like I said. first start out in the automotive industry, you're going to mainly be doing oil changes, tire rotations, uh, changing air filters, changing batteries, changing wiper blades, just very basic stuff. You kind of got to earn your keep and prove yourself before you can move on to the next step. I mean, you got to think about it. You're starting out at the bottom. You got to work your way up. So in order to do those jobs, you really don't have to have a ton of tools. You just need your basic stuff. So I'm going to kind of break this video up into sections and uh, make it a little bit easier to follow so you can see what tools you need for what job that you're going to be doing. So I'm going to start off with the first thing, an oil change. What do you need to do a basic oil change when you come into an automotive shop? An oil filter wrench. You're going to need one of these. Um, most of the time this will take care of most oil filters you come into. Now, I do have some other things here that I'm going to talk about, but um, you can pick these up really from just about anywhere. This one is a Mac Tools one, which was kind of nice because I've warranty this out a couple times because it's broken because I use it a lot. So it's nice to get something that you can warranty very easily, but you don't have to spend a ton of money on an oil filter wrench. Just get something that fits good on a filter and that's going to last you. Another option would be some of these like uh, plier type filter wrenches. They can kind of get bigger or smaller. Um, these come in handy a lot whenever someone really over tightened an oil filter or it's hard to get into. Because um, you can see there's a definitely pliers are a lot thinner than the wrench. So sometimes that is a big help when trying to do oil filters. Now, every once in a while, you will run into. A filter that takes like a specialty socket like this which is a oil filter socket set now I use the 32 millimeter a lot in the GM world um, any of the Ecotechs and a couple other engines have those along with the 24 millimeters used a lot in the GM world um, and then there's other applications I know Ford um, BMW, all, all kinds of people use them. So you're probably going to need these eventually, but it's not something that you're going to need right off. And then you'll get into your different cups and stuff sometimes that you need. This one's for a, um, I got to, got it to use on the Pontiac Vibes. They have Toyota engines in them, and some of them have a plastic cap on the filter that is pretty hard to get off unless you have the right socket. It kind of has teeth and then you can see kind of grabs it. So once again, not something that you're going to have to have. It just depends on what you're working on. If you're working on a lot of cars that take stuff like this, then you're probably going to want to get one. And then you also got your different types of claws. Um, these are just kind of a, a luxury to have sometimes makes things a lot easier. These are great for whenever people over tighten oil filters and you can't get them off. Uh, these things have got me out of bunch of uh, bad situations and then you're gonna need a couple wrenches um, just start now you don't really have to invest in like a snap-on wrench and spend three hundred dollars on a wrench set um, there's so many great options for wrenches out right now and uh, I'm sure I'm gonna talk about that in future videos but for now 
I mean, if you're just starting out and you don't even know if you want to do this for a career or not, I would just go with like a, like this is, this is actually one of the first wrenches I got. It's just a standard craftsman wrench. Now the downside to wrenches like this is they don't really have that much length. So you're not going to get a ton of leverage on them, but all in all, I mean, this is going to work to break a drain plug loose and tighten it back up. So those are the things that you need to do an oil change to take an oil filter off, to pop a drain plug loose, let the oil drain out, just your basic things. Nothing really there that you have to invest too heavily in. And I will be listing below um, links to all these tools and things I recommend. Not these exact tools. Some of them might be exact what I have. Some of them are just things you can kind of skimp on and uh, get something a little cheaper. Because like I said, you don't even know if you want to do this for a living yet. You may get into the automotive field and be like, this sucks. I don't want to do this. And it's just personal preference. So before I keep rambling on, let's move on to the next thing. So starting out in the automotive industry as a lube tech, your most important thing, in my opinion, is the inspection. You got to make sure you do a thorough inspection each time because you could potentially be missing a ton of money for the shop and you could also be missing stuff that's safety related for the customer so you definitely don't want to leave them going out of the shop with a loose wheel bearing or a loose tie rod or brakes that are about to be metal on metal you you definitely want to be thorough on your inspections so some tools to help you do that for one flashlights get a flashlight I've seen so many guys come through the shop starting out, ask me to come look at something. I come over there and they're looking down in the engine with no flashlight asking me, oh, where do you think this is leaking from? I'm like, well, to start off with, you have a flashlight so I can actually see what you're looking at. <laughs> so get a flashlight. Um, it doesn't have to be the fancy uh, stream light. I actually just recently upgraded to one of these, but I will say this light is awesome. This is a Streamlight Stinger, um, it's the LED, it's a new version, I forget the exact lumens or whatever, but it's plenty bright enough, I can tell you that. I would at least recommend something like this. This is actually a Streamlight 2, um, I got this off the Matco truck, it, it used to have a Matco logo on it, but it's just uh, rebranded obviously, they just stuck their logo on it and probably charged $15 more. But this is just a Streamlight little inspection light you can keep it in your shirt pocket um get something like that i mean even if you just go to like AutoZone or something and pick up a little led pocket light get something that you can actually see what you're looking at and also for inspections get a brake gauge it doesn't have to be anything fancy this is a, a metal brake gauge which is really nice because it's very durable but you can just get the little plastic brake gauge um, I know a lot of shops will supply them to you. I know my shop supplies all of our Lutex with uh, a tread depth gauge and a brake gauge. But I, I bought my own because I buy my own of everything. But um, then also, like I said, tire tread gauge. It's a must. Um, just so that you can be exact on your numbers when you're putting um, your numbers down on your inspection sheets. You want to be dead on on everything and be as thorough as possible just so that nothing comes back on you and you did your job right. So that's a, the basic stuff you need for an inspection. You wanna check tires, brakes, and visually inspect the car for leaks and uh, any type of safety concern. All right, so now let's talk tires. You're gonna be doing a lot of tire rotations probably, and you're gonna need a good impact wrench. Um, this is not an area that I would skimp in. Personally, I would buy a good air impact, half inch drive, something that's gonna have plenty of power and that's gonna last you. Cause you don't wanna buy a piece of crap that's just gonna break on you after a, a few months of use. Cause you're gonna be using this thing every day, nonstop. I have the Mac Tools AWP 050 half inch impact. And this thing's awesome. I would definitely recommend this if you have access to a Mac uh, tool truck if they come by your shop. If not, I mean, snap on Matco. They all have good impacts. Or you can go with an online brand or something. 
I'll link a few down below, like I said earlier, that I think are a good option uh, besides the tool truck brands. And with the impact wrench over here, you're also gonna need, now these are, this kind of comes down to personal preference. Some people hate torque sticks and some people love them. I personally love them. I use them all the time and they work great for me, so I continue to use them. I know some people say they don't get the wheels tight enough, blah, 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 whatever. I've never had that problem. I've never had one single comeback because the wheels were loose or too tight or whatever. But if you want to get torque sticks, that's an option. Basically what they do, they're made to limit the torque to a certain rating, like this one's 120 foot pound and this one's 100 foot pound. And you put them on your impact and tighten them down. Um, like I said, personal preference. I like them, I would recommend them, but that's up to you. And also, you're gonna need some half inch drive, deep well impact sockets. These are actually some of the first sockets I ever bought and I still use them every single day. I mean, they're super discolored and faded. They're uh, just USA Craftsman sockets and I've never broke one, never had a problem, never needed to replace them. So I still have them and I'm still gonna use them until I break one and then I'll replace it with something. But yeah, get deep half inch impact sockets. I say deep because if you get a shallow one, sometimes you can't get all the way on a lug nut. If it's a capped lug nut, you can damage it. Um, I've seen guys in my shop damage them before and customers complain about it. So make sure you get a deep one. You can kind of skimp on these. You can get a cheaper brand. Um, SunX makes really good impact sockets for a really good price. So that's somewhere I would look. Um, also gray pneumatic. Uh, there's a ton of options. I'll link some down below like I said. If you're not using torque sticks, you need to be using a torque wrench. Um, I know a lot of people will check the torque on wheels after they torque them with torque sticks with a torque wrench. I personally don't do that. I know it's recommended, but I don't. I've never had a problem, so I don't do it. I'm just being honest with you. But a lot of people use torque wrenches. You can pick up, this is just a Harbor Freight half inch drive click style torque wrench. Uh, it's completely sufficient to check torque on wheels. I think you can pick one of these up for like 15 or 20 bucks at Harbor Freight. Um, can't really go wrong with that. And then lastly for tires, you need some type of air gauge um, to check tire pressures. You don't really have to get one this fancy, although I would kind of recommend getting one this fancy because uh, the tire pressure systems in cars nowadays are so advanced that I mean, plus or minus five PSI could potentially set a light and that would cause the customer to come back and be unhappy that they have to make another trip to the dealership or shop or wherever you work. So I don't think it's a bad idea to invest a little bit of money into your, um, into your air chuck or whatever you want to call it. This one is a Astro pneumatic. Um, I will actually link this exact tool down below because I really like this one. I've had it for like probably five years or so and I've never had a problem with it. Just replace batteries. This is a really good option. You can also go cheaper. It's up to you. Um, just something that's accurate. You want to be close. That way you don't set lights and stuff. I know for me working for a Buick GMC dealer, people will come back if their tire pressures aren't dead on and it happens often. So this helps prevent that from happening. All right, so lastly with the tools that I would recommend, I would say some type of cordless impact driver. It doesn't necessarily have to be an impact driver. You could get like a cordless screwdriver or even a, a cordless ratchet, a cordless impact. But an impact driver is kind of a good middle of the road. Um, I really like this one a lot. This is a DeWalt 20 volt. It has the quick release quarter inch hex drive. It has a, a pretty good amount of power for its size, and I think it's a really good option for just kind of a middle of the road when you're first starting out, because it's powerful enough to get most of the stuff off you need, but not so powerful that you're gonna break everything you touch. Although it will break through plastic pretty easy, so be careful. And also with this, I would recommend some type of bit set um, I just pulled these out of my bit set that I got from Matco. Um, it's rebranded. I'll list below 
another set pretty close to it. It's probably the same exact set just without Mako's name on it. But it's just going to have some like uh, hex drive, quarter inch extensions, um, some Torx. I know Torx is big in GM world. I'm sure it is in everyone else's too. Uh, you need these to get the bolts out of the, the air filter boxes. Then it also has your all your adapters for quarter inch, three eighths, and half inch. And then also your uh, Phillips head, flat head. It'll get you through most of the stuff you need. Just when you're checking air filters and taking off uh, plastic on the other side of the car and stuff like that. And then also, you're probably going to want a good 3 8 ratchet. Probably flex head. I'm, I personally like flex head. That's what I always do. It kind of gives you more options, especially when you're getting down, taking oil filter caps off and stuff. Um, this one is the Mac Tools. It's their, their new style ratchets. And these things, I personally love them. These are probably one of my favorite ratchets out right now. But, I mean, you can really get whatever ratchet you you like or want or whatever. You can kind of skimp in this area. I mean, go to Harbor Freight and get one. They're completely sufficient for someone starting out. So those were kind of the tools that I would recommend to someone getting ready to walk into a dealership or a shop. And you know you're going to be doing oil changes, tire rotations, and just your basic stuff like that. Nothing really more. Um, until you can prove yourself. Now obviously some of those things you can invest a lot of money in and some of them you can kind of skimp on. It's really up to you. If you're going to be using it every single day a lot, it's probably a good idea to at least spend a little bit of money on it and get something that's going to last for you. But what you don't want to do is go in there and see everyone with their big snap-on boxes and Matco boxes and be like, oh man, I need to get that, and I need to get this, and I need to get all the tools. Don't do that. That's not a good idea. Just get your basic stuff that I just told you. Start with that. Get your feet wet. See if you like working at a shop, and then go from there. Um, I'm going to do another video about kind of the next step from here, what you need. And also, just a little word of advice. If you're getting into the automotive world, be patient. Don't get all caught up and wanting more money and more this and more that and getting mad because they're not giving you this job or you're not getting this job. Just prove yourself to start off with. Do good at oil changes. Do good at tire irritations. Make sure you're tightening oil filters down. Make sure you're tightening drain plugs down. Make sure you're tightening wheels down. Those are huge things that you have to do to prove yourself. And it's a a shame because a lot of people don't do that. There's so many guys that come through my shop that do a terrible job and after three months of working there complaining that they want to be moved up and they're not making enough money. Well, you got to prove yourself first. You got to put in your time. You got to show everyone that you're willing to learn and you're willing to listen. Don't go into a shop being all cocky, acting like you know everything because chances are you don't know everything. And in the end of the day, no one knows everything. I don't know everything for sure. I'm learning stuff every day. And you got to have that attitude. You got to be willing to learn and willing to listen. But that's a whole other subject. And I could rant on about that for a long time. So I'm going to stop there. <laughs> so I hope you like this video. Make sure to like and subscribe below. And uh, give me a comment. Um, tell me if I missed something. I'm sure I missed some tools. I was just trying to be very basic on... Uh, on what I recommended. But thanks so much for watching guys. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.